Hi, I'm Greg Lafoe. I'm a senior research scientist with Agriculture Victoria, and I'll be presenting on our project, our research work into strengthening cultural and biological management um, of pests and diseases in apple and pear orchards. There are some serious gaps in our knowledge of cultural and uh, biological controls in apple and pear orchards. And this research aims to address some of those gaps. We know, for example, that natural enemies and other beneficial insects play a really important role in controlling key pests and in our re reducing our reliance on chemical inputs in the orchard. However, we don't always know how effective those natural enemies are in the orchard or how we could optimise their effectiveness to further reduce chemical inputs. So part of that research will be looking at um, developing more effective biocontrols and cultural practices, and not only looking at their impact on key pests and diseases, but on broader orchard uh, management practices. Um, so we're focusing on some key pests in particular, such as coddly moth and light brown apple moth. Um, the picture on the right is a highly specialised parasite of coddly moth. So coddly moth is one of the key pests in uh, apple and pear orchards in Australia. And we often rely on chemical inputs to control coddly moth. However, overseas, um, researchers have found that mastrous riddens is a really effective biocontrol agent and it's a classical biocontrol. So once it's released into an, an orchard and establishes in its new environment, it keeps controlling the coddly moth year after year. And we then don't need to necessarily constantly spray coddly moth. We can dramatically reduce our chemical inputs and in some cases eliminate them altogether. Um, so coddly moth, um, the coddly moth biocontrol program introduced mastrous riddens for the first time in Australia in 2014. And we know that in orchards where mastrous was released, we saw dramatic declines in coddly moth populations. What we don't know, because we can't detect mastrous in the field, is whether mastrous has established permanent populations in Australia and is uh, controlling coddly moth uh, year after year. So we need to do further work in that area. If it's not established, there is a possibility that we need to introduce greater genetic diversity into the mastrous population in Australia. And that's another key part of the project that I'll talk about shortly. So the mastrous population that was released had obviously gone through quarantine and had been in a laboratory culture for many years. And so it may be necessary to introduce new genetic diversity into the population. So it's fitter in the field. We're also looking at the impact of trichogramma species on both light brown apple moth and coddly moth eggs. We know trichogramma can be highly effective on light brown apple moth. And so we're looking at how effective it is on coddly moth and not just doing work in the lab, but taking that into the orchard. So the first part of the work is to detect mastrous field establishment. So there have been wide, widespread releases of mastrous across the country. And as I mentioned, in the first year at least, it seems to be highly effective, but we have trouble recovering mastrous in subsequent years. So we don't know if it's failed to establish or whether it's still there, but occurring in very low numbers that are difficult to detect. We've been working with Mofika uh, Hussain at Agriculture Victoria and another of our colleagues, Kevin Varnier, who's a chemist, to develop a chemical lure for mastrous. And that's again, building on some overseas work. And so we've already taken this into the glass house and we're um, conducting experimental releases of mastrous and looking at what dose of this chemical lure um, attracts mastrous to the trap. And the next step is to take this into the orchard. And so what we hope to do is go back to those release sites, put these chemical traps in the orchard. And if mastrous is present, even if it's in very low numbers, we'll be able to detect it and demonstrate that mastrous has established per permanent populations. Um, if we can't detect mastrous establishment in Australia, we can go to the next step. Now, if mastrous has not established, then the possibility is that we have um, an inbred population. We know that mastrous was originally collected in Central Asia and imported to several countries before it arrived in Australia. So it's gone through several genetic bottlenecks. Each time it's been transferred from one laboratory to another. And so uh, what we can do is collaborate with researchers such as those in Chile, who have collected mastrous directly from those native populations in Chile. So we know it's a, a highly genetic diverse and fit population. And so we're collaborating with researchers in Chile to look at re-importing mastrous into Australia. 
um, as a new population and we can conduct further releases and hopefully improve establishment success and impact on the pest. Of course, uh, we once again need to go through a quarantine phase to ensure that anything we introduce to Australia is safe for release and doesn't harm anything else. Another key barrier to establishment for many of the um, specialised natural enemies that we use in orchards is the, the simple harshness of the environment. So uh, orchards often have bare floors or the management practices might be inappropriate for maintaining populations of these natural enemies. Um, sprays in particular can have an adverse impact on mastrus and other biocontrol agents. And so what we aim to do is to combine our biocontrol efforts with cultural practices, such as introducing native flowering plants into the intero space between trees. And that's something that we're doing in two states at the moment. And we'll measure the um, impact of these cultural practices on the pests, um, the diseases that occur in the orchard, but also on soil health and tree health and ultimately on crop yield. So in the first year of the project, which we've just completed, we have um, conducted plantings in the orchards in two states, in Victoria and in collaboration with the University of Tasmania and Steve Quarrell down there in Tassie. And so the first part of it is really setting up for these conservation biocontrol experiments. So it's conducting consultation um, with other industries who are, have implemented similar experimental programs, developing um, experimental design and monitoring protocols because these are large scale orchard experiments conducted in two states. Preparing the site, which is really key because we don't want weedy species in the orchard competing with the native plants that we're trying to introduce. Um, so site preparation is really key. So that, that involves um, clearing out um, weedy species with cultivation and herbicides, uh, and then selecting the plants that we're going to introduce. So um, we're looking for key criteria for selecting those native species that we think would thrive in an orchard um, and not only thrive, but produce everything that natural enemies might want, such as flower, flowering, um, species that flower all year around and provide nectar and pollen for some of our parasitoids um, and also shelter as well, but which don't impact adversely on soil health and tree health. Once we've selected those, we then go out and source and order the these seeds and tube stock and commence sowing. And that's already been implemented in both Victoria and Tasmania. And so we'll be going back shortly um, to inspect those plantings and look at how successfully our native seedlings have established. In all of the work that we're doing, it's key to communicate with growers. Um, and so uh, alongside um, all of the experimental work that's underway, we're working with the Future Orchards Program um, and Emily Crawford at Agriculture Victoria, who's an extension specialist, to get information out to growers, but also to um, get information back to us from growers as well about what they're seeing in the orchard because we're monitoring the impact of these natural enemies on many of the pests and diseases that they see every day. Uh, we use the um, Apple and the Australian Apple and Pear IPDM website. So that's a special website where extension materials is basically a one-stop shop can be provided to growers. We also have a really active community of practice that meets, practice that meets monthly. So we have seminars from presenters, we have reports from each state about what is occurring in Victoria. And we also have a Facebook page where growers can post queries and have that community respond, such as what is this pest or how do I control it? And a key part of working as part of the PIPS program is that we have linkages with all of the other projects in, in that really important program. So for example, in our orchard experiments, we're uh, collecting soil samples that we send down to the soil health team in Tasmania for analysis. So uh, if we're putting native species into the intero space to create greater diversity and support those natural enemies, we also want to know what impact those plants have on soil health and moisture and so forth. And so we can collaborate with the soil health team to analyse some of that data. At the same time, um, that research team who's really focused on soil health is also doing pest monitoring in their plots. And so we can com compare our results. And so the outcomes for, for growers and for the industry more broadly is a high level understanding of the interactions between these cultural and biological and chemical practices in, practices in um, integrated pest and disease management. 
um, with the advisors and growers more confident in providing that IPDM advice to growers. And ultimately, um, what we really want to see is improved adoption of effective, sustainable and low input pest management, because that's really what the market is craving. And I'd just like to thank um, Agriculture Victoria, the Tasmanian um, Institute of Agriculture, um, Tasmanian government, and of course, Ford Innovation and the Apple and Pear Fund for all the support they're giving us in this work. Thank you.